Okay, you can begin. Okay. Their knowledge needs not words. Their knowledge, yeah, needs not words to embody idea. Idea, seeking a house in boundlessness, weary of its homeless immortality, asks not in thoughts, carved brilliant cell to rest, whose single windows clipped outlook on thing, sees only a little arc of God's vast sky. So here we have a very, very interesting beginning because we see that uh, that uh, oneness here is the soul of multitude and all the truths come together in a single truth and all ideas even rejoin reality. So now he's going to talk about wisdom. And he says wisdom knows herself by her own term the self. In other words, she knows herself completely without any term, without any any limit. Mm -hmm. She is supernal, that's heavenly, wordless, absolute, all-seeing, motionless, sovereign, and alone. Mm -hmm. where, where she is, you see, knowledge needs not words to embody idea. Because, mm -hmm. well, Sri Aurobindo says that knowledge is something of the mind. Mm -hmm. and, when, and, and the mind has to use words to explain itself. So, in that place where wisdom is, her knowledge doesn't need any words to make, to embody idea. To embody is to, to give a tangible body to. <laughs> idea or a principle or something like that. And then she says, idea, seeking mm -hmm. house in boundlessness. Weary of its homeless immortality. It doesn't want to rest in this brilliant carved cell of thought. Because thought's window is a very, very narrow outlook on things. Um, and it sees only a little arc of this vast sky of God. This has always meant to me that, that this is an opportunity for us to be humble, truly humble. Right, right. Because on our day-to-day -day dealings with family and life and work and everything else, we have a very single, a small window which has a very clipped outlook on things. And we don't see anything except the tiny little arc of this vast sky of God. Mm -hmm. now, how do we get out of that? We get out of it only by leaping above body, life, and mind to the higher realms. Higher mind, intuitive mind, illumined mind, over mind, and finally super mind. So right now he's telling us that, that this idea does not want to rest in this little, little view of God's vast sky. Now, he's going to tell us what's going to happen when we are there. The boundless. Oh, that was very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Narad, sir. Yeah. The boundless, with the boundless, their consorts, while there, one can be wider than the world, while there, one is one's own infinity. So this is when we rise to that great, great height, at least the overmind. And mm -hmm. we see there that the boundless is consorting. Consorting means to keep company with. Consort with the boundless. Uh -huh. And even there's now two lines that begin with while there. Very mm -hmm. important. While there, comma, one can be wider than the world. And one is one's own infinity. How beautiful. Now back to Ashwapati. 
okay so the duality is lost there is something yeah, no duality there anymore no duality anymore yeah his center was no more in earthly minds a power of seeing silence filled his limbs caught by a voiceless white epiphany into a vision that surpasses forms into a living that surpasses life in neared the still consciousness sustaining all well this is sri arbindo of course speaking about himself this power of of silence that can see everything has filled his limbs and he's caught by this voiceless epiphany epiphany is a, a sudden perception or insight into the reality or the essential meaning of things mm-hmm. very often it's the appearance of a deity but not in this case it's a voiceless white epiphany sudden, sudden intuitive perception it can be a vision that surpasses form so this vision that surpasses forms is when one rises so high that one sees all things only as the divine mm-hmm. he doesn't see the form of shilpa or narad as forms he sees the soul in them and he has this vision that surpasses forms he has this living he's living now in a, in a in a plane of consciousness that surpasses life and now he nears this still consciousness that is the transcendent divine that sustains everything right naraji i'm almost uh, envisioning the virat rupa that shri krishna had shown to arjuna in the yes. mahabharata over yes, yes it feels like that Yeah. Good, good. Voice. The voice that only by speech can move the mind became a silent knowledge in the soul. The strength that only in action feels its truth was lodged now in a mute, omnipotent, omnipotent peace. Yes. So we see this voice, our voice, actually, that only by speech can move the mind. So we have a great, great speaker, a great, great vibhuti. Even we can see uh, when uh, <clears throat> Vivekananda went to America, mm-hmm. his words touched thousands of people. He opened America to the east. Mm-hmm. It was he who did it. Right. Now that that voice that only by speech can move the mind has now been mm-hmm. in the Ashwapati Sri Aurobindo a silent knowledge in the soul. And even this strength that only feels its truth or its power only in action was now lodged in a silent. omnipotent all powerful peace mm-hmm. <clears throat> we'll carry on a leader in the labor of the worlds a pause in the joy and anguish of the search restored the stress of nature to god's calm this is a little complicated Okay. Uh-huh. I will take it slowly. A leisure in the labor of the world. The world is always laboring through mm-hmm. nature to, okay. to advance the evolution. Okay. Na- nature will make thousands and th- millions of experiments in different kinds of new lives. We see mm-hmm. 
we see even now new animals that are being found, new birds that are coming. And mm -hmm. we've never seen them before. People say mm -hmm. they may have been there, they don't know that. We mm -hmm. see that this, this anguish and the joy of the search mm -hmm. has paused. And wow. this stress of nature stretch of nature always always experimenting and always evolving is mm. not restored to the calm of god okay makes sense for you i think huh? yes yes it's making sense clearer, getting clearer what we're saying yes now he will continue on with this so let's go ahead sure a vast unanimity ended life's debate. The war of thought that fathers the universe, the clash of forces struggling to prevail in the tremendous shock that lights a star as in the building of a grain of dust. The grooves that turn their dumb ellipse in space, plowed by the seeking of the world's desire, the long regurgitations of time's flood, the torment edging the dire force of lust that wakes kinetic in earth's dulled slime and carves a personality out of mud. The sorrow by which nature's hunger is fed, the oysters which creates with fire of pain, the fate that punishes virtue with defeat, the tragedy that destroys long happiness, the weeping of love, the quarrel of the gods, seized in a truth which lives in its own light. So we go through the feelings of the lines and then afterwards you can read them all. Sure. This vast unanimity, this vast oneness, in mm -hmm. this debate that life always has. Life's debate of good and evil, truth and falsehood, happiness and sorrow, all those things have been ended. Even the war of thoughts. Now, fathers here is, it is defined as creates. Oh, okay. The war of thoughts that creates the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So first of all, we have a vast unanimity that ends mm -hmm. this debate of life. Then there's a full stop. Now mm -hmm. he begins this long, long sentence because he wants to tell us uh, all these things that ha are happening and happen in our world and our life. Oh. The war of thoughts that creates the universe, this clash of forces that are struggling to prevail, to hold on in the tremendous shock that lights a star as in the building of a grain of dust. The grooves that turn their dumb ellipse in space, plowed by the seeking of the world's desire, the long regurgitations of time's flood, the torment edging the dire force of lust that wakes kinetic in earth's dullard slime and carves a personality out of mud, the sorrow by which nature's hunger is fed, the estrus which creates with fire of pain, the fate that punishes virtue with defeat, the tragedy that destroys long happiness, the weeping of love, the quarrel of the gods, ceased in a truth which lives in its own life. So now we have to go through lots of words. <laughs> now, all of these things that are happening. First of all, this tremendous shock that can light yeah. a star, that can make a star. Huh? And even the building of a grain of dust, that infinitesimal, infinitesimal grain of dust. Mm -hmm. Divine gives equal time and space to everything. He gives okay. time and space to the lighting of a star. He gives 
all of his energy into building a grain of dust. And these grooves that turn their dumb ellipse in space. An ellipse is a closed plane. It's a curve that results from the intersection of a circular cone and a plane cutting through it. So you have to see sort of that there's a groove <clears throat> that, that turns their dumb ellipse, their dumb plane, and, and what and it's, the groove is a narrow cut or an indentation in a, in a surface. Mm -hmm. Or it's a fixed habit, a fixed routine. We can call it a fixed routine, these, uh, these grooves that turn. What do we know about them? We see the star oh. moving, we see the moon, we see the sun going up and down. We think it is anyway. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And now we see that... Uh, these grooves that that turn their dumb ellipse in space are mm. cloud. Cloud is an interesting word because it, mm. it's not the plow that we know as an agricultural plow, but there is a verb of plow which to okay. make which is to make grooves in something as as if it's with a plow. So so these these uh, grooves are plowed. Why? How are they plowed? They're plowed by the seeking of the world's desire. The world wants something. It's seeking something. These long regurgitations of time's flood, these movements of rushing or surging back. You know, regurgitation is something that always comes back. We, we've oh. had... We've had that when we had the vomit. Mm, okay. Regurgitation, it's a bringing up. So these regurgitations of time's flood are continually coming. But also things are coming like the torment edging, this, this torment that edges the dire force of lust, that waits kinetic. Kinetic is produced by motion. Motion. Mm. Produced by motion in this dull slime of earth. And somehow that dire force of love carves a personality out of mud. It's carved you and me. Our parents, mm -hmm. our parents created both of us. Physical, mm -hmm. physical form. Mm -hmm. The sorrow by which nature's hunger is fed. Strong line, strong line. Yeah. Now, uh, there, nature's always hungry, always hungry to improve, to advance, to evolve. And now we have that word estrus. Okay. <clears throat> I have a couple of definitions to share with you, one from Alok and one from Mano. Um, he says that it's the heat and Pain experienced during a fertile period conducive to conception. Here it refers to the suffering that human beings go through in ordinary life, which is a kind of subconscious process in nature to prepare the being for the birth of the spiritual consciousness within us. And Amado says, estrus is the constant prodding from inside and it's a fiery sensation. Mm. Okay. Okay. Now we have also the fate that punishes virtue with defeat, because we do have fate that punishes virtue with defeat. But we can't understand that our, at our level. We have to see it from a different level of experience. The mm -hmm. that destroys long happiness, the weeping of love, the quarrel of the gods. Is there a quarrel of the gods? Oh, yes, the gods are always quarreling. One wants to be this, one wants to do this, the other one doesn't want them to do it. All of this, everything we just read, ceased in a truth which lives in its own light. How beautiful. So all these things we've just read have now ceased in that truth that lives in its own light. 
Okay. I think it's time for you to read this. We did quite a bit today. Sure. Sure. And remember the pronunciation of estrus. Estrus, yes. Okay. So, uh, Naritza, you want me to read from where we begin or? Yes. Just those lines. Okay. We begin. Okay. 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 All seeing, motionless, sovereign and alone. Their knowledge needs not words to embody idea. Yeah, but it's, idea. It, but it's their knowledge needs. Not their oh. knowledge, not their knowledge needs. Their knowledge needs not words to embody idea. Idea, seeking a house in boundlessness weary of its homeless immortality, asks not in thoughts carved brilliant cell to rest, whose single windows, clipped outlook on things, sees only a little arc of God's vast sky. The boundless, with the boundless their consorts, while there one can be wider than the world, while there one is one's own infinity. His center was no more in earthly mind. A power of seeing silence filled his limbs, caught by a voiceless white epiphany into a vision that surpasses forms, into a living that surpasses life. He neared the still consciousness sustaining all. The voice that only by speech can move the mind became a silent knowledge in the soul. A strength that only in action feels its truth was lodged now in a mute, omnipotent peace. A leisure in the labor of the worlds, a pause in the joy and anguish of the surge, restored the stress of nature to God's calm. A vast unanimity ended life's debate. The war of thoughts that fathers the universe, the clash of forces struggling to prevail in the tremendous shock that lights a star as in a building of a grain of dust. The grooves that turn their dumb ellipse in space Plowed by the seeking of the world's desire, a long regurgitations of time's flood, the torment edging the dire force of lust that wakes kinetic in motion in earth's dullard slime and carves a personality out of mud. The sorrow by which nature's hunger is fed, the estrus which creates the fire of pain. The fate that punishes virtue with defeat, the tragedy that destroys long happiness, the weeping of love, the quarrel of the gods, seized in a truth which lives in its own light. Good reading. The only thing that I would ask you is to work more on the V sound. V, okay. Voice. V. V. Boy, that's uh, u- universe, the universe. Universe. Okay, so emphasis on V again. Okay. All right. Thank you, Narad sir. This this is very helpful to me. <laughs> I'm I'm trying to improve uh, it, my uh, language and vocabulary as we speak from whatever you give me during these sessions. This is really really helping me improve my life. Thank you so much, Narad sir. I'm yeah. really well, you're welcome, but you're doing well. It's your work that should be praised. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's only because of your grace uh, and your time that you're giving me in this life. So thank you, Narad, sir, very, very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.